Welcome back everybody. Well, this pile of wood back here hopefully will turn into a porch for that house over there. Now I've got a local company building a steel structure that'll make up my post and my headers, but once we get that erected, then I've got four by six beams over here that'll create my rafters, and then I've got some two by material down here that'll create a ledger against the house. But once we get all that constructed and up, then I have got tongue and groove planks that will go on top of my rafters and that'll create the ceiling from the underside and then we'll felt over that and put a standing seam metal roof on top of it. Now when I decided to put this kind of porch on the house, obviously there's, you always think of what can bite you down the road, but obviously anytime you've got wood, you gotta figure out how you're gonna preserve it. And then two, the bugs like to eat wood, so how are we gonna try to prevent that? And is it gonna be more trouble than it's worth in the long run? Well, it'll probably be some trouble in the long run, but I think aesthetically it looks good. I like wood, wife likes wood, so we're gonna go with it and we'll just deal with the consequences as we go down the road. But I've got a property a couple counties over. It's a little old cabin, but it's got exterior, it's wood on the exterior. And there's nothing ever been done to the exterior ever since they built it. And it's probably 15, 20 years old and I ask, the guy that we bought it from, I said, what did your dad put on this cabin when he built it to preserve this wood? And he said he used diesel fuel and motor oil. And so I bought a trailer just a few years ago and I asked him what was the best stuff to put on trailer decks and he said diesel fuel and motor oil. So we're gonna give it a shot. When you think about it, if I was a bug, I'd hate to chew around on diesel fuel. So maybe it'll deter them, but I've been playing with my mixture here to try to get a color, and so I'm liking the way it's turning out. So we're gonna try to put it on here tonight and see how it looks. Now, if you take to the internet, everybody has their own mixture that they use, but you'll use used motor oil and diesel fuel most of the time. And I guess you could substitute diesel fuel for with kerosene, but this is a two parts motor oil to one part diesel. And then I mixed up a 50-50 batch we're gonna go with the two and one. It just gives you a little darker color when you stain it. I don't know if the camera will pick the difference up, but you could use either one. But I'm gonna go with a two and one. As long as it's not too thick, we'll try that concoction, see how it looks. Now the next item to deal with is how we're gonna get it on there. So I have went to Harbor Freight and bought one of their airless sprayers and so we're going to try to spray this stuff on we should get a good even coverage and hopefully this will speed the process up now i'm going to build me a little paint booth in here i'm going to take some plastic i'll probably take these saw horses over here build me a little table and then build me a little cradle there to where i can set this stuff down in it we can spray it flip it over and then that plastic should catch the excess so we don't make such a mess but let's get set up here We'll throw the oil to it. Now you want to talk about building on the fly. That's what that is, but I've created a little trough here and then a little backstop. So I'll line this with plastic. It'll come up over the back. I'll put me a couple blocks on the bottom so we can set that stuff on there. I can spray it. Everything will keep it contained. We can flip it, flip it, paint it. We'll take it over and stack it up. See if we can get a little plastic in here and make us a pool. Swimming pools in. first batch I'm gonna make a decent size batch this first go around and we'll see how far it goes
All right, there's two parts. Oh! And we'll have to find a bigger bucket. One part diesel fuel. All right, we'll stir it up. Then I'll run it through a strainer. Let's see if we can spray it. All right, that's probably over a gallon. And I'd say right now the motor oil was free. Let's just say I put a half a gallon of diesel in it. So I got about a dollar fifty-two dollars in that right now. too bad but I think I got a little too much pressure I'm gonna have to dial it back all right that's after two coats and all the glares probably on it so you can't tell real well but I hit a third coat down here and you can sort of see where it gets a little darker right in here that's closer to the color I want this is a little lighter than I'm liking. But I'll tell you, the little sprayer does really good. I've been monkeying around here with the tip and the, this is how you adjust the flow, this little knob. But then you can play with this knob here, or the tip, and turn it vertical, horizontal, or throw it on a diagonal. It seems to work better on the diagonal. It seems to put more material on it. But this thing works good. I'm debating on whether or not I ought to go ahead and just roll them. If I have to put three coats on it, I'm gonna get a lot of overspray and uh, we'll have a contact buzz here before long. And I don't have a mask, but I'm just worried that I'm not gonna get it as dark as I want it, spraying it. And I'm thinking I might be able to just roll it on there quicker. sprayer worked really well but it doesn't put it on as thick as I want it and I don't want to sit back and have to spray it three or four times because the overspray it filling this building up and we'll be on a buzz for a half a week but I'm just gonna roll it we'll flip it roll it flip it roll it until we get them rolled on move them over and put another one in here but I don't think I built my little trough here in vain it's pretty nice that way if anything spills off your roller, it'll just hit in a little tray, which I've got it up on these blocks so it ain't laying down in it. I think it's gonna work. But the little sprayer, I'm impressed with it. We'll use it for something else. But I think I'm gonna roll them. I think I can get the coverage I want. Have you ever been going on a trip about 10 minutes after you get out of the driveway, the kid's in the back seat So we out there yet? I said, every time I turn around, I sit here and I look at myself and go, no, we ain't there yet. I got a ways to go, but I'm gonna work through the night. I'll show you what them look like after that time to dry. Well, the staining project has come to a halt. Here's the reason why. If you'll notice on these beams, I've got this, I don't know if it's a mold, a mildew, what it is, but as I pick through the stack, you can see this one, it's got it on it pretty bad, but I took paint thinner, I took bleach, and took a steel brush and tried to go in there and clean that off, and I can't get that off. And I cleaned a couple up here the other night when I was staining them, and you can see it's bleeding through that, and basically it's, it's green, so too much money invested there for me to have green rafters. So these were clear and didn't have any mold or whatever you want to call it on it. But this kind of shows you what that oil treatment does to it and the color you get. But I'm pleased with the outcome on the ones that doesn't have this on it. But as I pick through them, most of them have it. So sawmill guy he's going to take them back and resurface them for me and try to hopefully 
get that outer layer off and we can get this cleaned up so I can get a uniform stain like this one when I complete them all. Well, that's about par for the course for building a house. You take one step forward and about 47 backwards, but it is what it is. We'll get them resurfaced, hopefully cleaned up, and we'll go at it again. But I will say the stain and oil combination, I like the color that's coming from it, and I think it's gonna work. That would be great though for, uh, you know, beds on trailers to preserve them. It's quick and it's easy and it's cheap. You can do a whole lot of staining for 10 bucks. Well, for those of you who followed along, they approved my conduit in my ditch for my underground power. So got to get my little uh, covers made for my bump outs where my meter base and disconnect will go. And hopefully we'll get that done next week, get everything approved so we can pull some wire in here. Hopefully have a little power inside the house before long. And lastly, we got some more work that's arrived. We got our doors. So here in a few days, I'll try to get those stuck in. And then I gotta do some casing around these garage doors and hopefully get this place buttoned up here before too long. But anyway, plenty more work to go. But if you watch this one, I appreciate it. And we'll see you later. And one quick note before I go, if you're wondering if a little spark it's going to set all these beams on fire and burn the porch and the house down. Let's see. Now, I could probably hold it on the wood long enough to get it to burn. But by the looks of that, I don't think a little spark's going to burn us down. We'll see y'all later.